let's talk about ragwort. Now, if you're an equestrian like me, then ragwort will be something that you've more than likely either heard of or dealt with. But do you know the facts and how to handle it appropriately so that you don't get completely overrun like the field you can see behind me? So fact number one is that ragwort is biennial. So it takes two years for a ragwort plant to come into fruition and to look like the pretty yellow daisies that we all know and love. Did I just say know and love? I meant hate and detest. Now the main problem is that these yellow flowers don't just stay as pretty yellow flowers. You see, the whole process starts with the flowers going to seed and then seeding because each seed is like a little parachute and it can fly for up to two miles. And that's how it manages to take over so much land so quickly. These little seeds really get on well with land that's been disturbed. So if you've got a piece of land that you might have dug up recently, or if you've got livestock that like to dig around in the dirt, then that is a prime location for the ragwort seeds to germinate. Now ragwort germinates and grows throughout the spring months but the first sign you'll see of them is the rosettes or florets as we call them that come up in the autumn of year one. Now what you don't realise is they've been growing for months already throughout the spring. These florets grow then throughout the spring of year two and then by autumn of year two you will have these flourishing huge yellow daisy topped plants. So what's the problem with ragwort? It can be quite pretty. The problem is ragwort is so poisonous to livestock, especially horses. They contain something called alkaloids, which are toxic to livestock and mostly toxic to horses. In 2003, DEFRA pushed forward the Ragwort Control Act of 2003. It's a code of practice that prevents the spread of ragwort and you can find out lots more about what you can and can't do and the control of ragwort from their website, which you can see the link here and I'll also link it in the description below. So you might be thinking, huh, do animals really eat this stuff? I'm afraid they do. You see, ragwort tastes really bitter when it's alive. If it's green with its waxy leaves, it tastes absolutely vile. So the majority of horses and livestock will stay away from it and tend to eat around it. There are times when you will have an animal that decides that they like the taste and then unless you're going to remove them from that field or at least do as much as you can, then the prognosis really isn't good. And I can tell you that from experience. However, when ragwort is dead, it suddenly loses its bitter, nasty taste. And that's when livestock, especially horses, will start chowing down on it and thinking, oh, this is actually quite tasty. As well as this, if you are trying to manage your field well and appropriately, then you need to know that ragwort really does compete with the grass. You might have an absolute ton of grass in your field, in your pasture, but over time, the ragwort locks together and completely stifles the ground so that the grass can't grow anymore. Ragwort grows really well even when it's really dry summer months because the leaves are so waxy and really retain and hold on to that moisture. It's also really important 
to get the ragwort out so that it doesn't completely infest your neighbour's field. It's just good etiquette. You don't want to pass on your problem to your neighbour next door. I'm sure they're not going to be pleased about it. So how do we control ragwort? The most effective thing to do, but also the most labour intensive, is to pull the ragwort out. But it has to come out by the roots. You can use a rag fork or use in your hands as long as the ground is quite wet so that you don't leave the roots behind. This can be really quite easy if you only have a small paddock, but obviously if you've got absolutely tons of land then, unless you've got an army, which most of us don't have, then it's going to be a tough process that you probably need to work on over weeks, months, and sometimes even years. Don't forget to wear gloves. This stuff is even an irritant to us. And it can be bad for us if we ingest it or if it gets into the moisture in our hands. You need to wear gloves. Some people can be really, really allergic to this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to find out if I am. Cutting is also really effective, but plants that have been cut down grow back from the ground up because they've already got that root system. The problem there is, whereas a ragwort plant is biennial, it can then become perennial, meaning that it grows back year after year after year, like a bush. And that's why you see areas such as this, which is absolutely full. And it's usually from fields that have been topped over the years or mowed down. And it really, really does create a hardy, strong plant, which we really do not want. Another way to control this horrendous weed is by spraying. Good quality herbicides can be really effective but they need to be used at a specific time of year. Timing is everything. And don't forget, you're gonna have to restrict your grazing. So when is the best time to spray? You need to target the rosettes during autumn of year one. As soon as you see them start to come up, that's when you need to get spraying. They really are more susceptible to the spray at this time because they are really putting all their energy into growing and putting down a really strong root system. Because the weather is starting to warm up, the spray works so much better than in the cooler months. You want the herbicide to really work down into those roots. Extra rain at that time really helps it to get down into the soil and the plant soaks it all up with having the extra sun. It also means that if you've treated your pasture well, then you won't have any ragwort in your hay come the spring. Spray can be applied right up until the end of September when the weather is most favourable. The more professional grade products need to be administered by someone, a professional that has an NPTC certificate. And it takes about six weeks to work. According to one of the most commonly used herbicide treatments, grazing restrictions are as follows. Ragwort plants sprayed with herbicide are more palatable and contain higher levels of toxins. Animals should be excluded from any treatment areas until any ragwort has either completely recovered or completely died. And there is no visible sign at all of the dead weed. If you've enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and subscribe to our channel so that you can watch other interesting videos like this. Thank you for watching.